And it just so happens that my father is going to try to tie me into LA Unified School District. LA Unified which is the largest district in the nation to speak of high schools and middle schools about exactly what I'm talking about right now. So I need to try to deliver something so somebody can see me doing my thing, so maybe they'll bring me on. Okay. I am the CEO and founder of Me Eat Now. But in my world, where I come from, those numbers, 18, 9, 1, equals 28. I went to 18 elementary schools. I had it rough. I am a survivor of the street. I went to nine junior high schools. But I got adopted at 16 years old by a widow Japanese lady that took me into her home with two daughters and raised me through high school my sophomore year at Long Beach Poly. And that was the start of. But what it was was a promise that I made at three years old. When I was first beaten by my stepdad, they took me away and they put me in, in a safe house and they put him in jail. And I remember being in the safe house. This is where it all started. This is my passion. This is me knowing that my Lord is with me every single day. I believe that. Because at three years old, I went out to the backyard and, I, and, I, and, I, and there's the grass area and I got on a swing set and I'm swinging and I'm looking up and I'm saying, wow, hey, I know you're up there. Because it taught me this in Sunday school. Yeah, Jesus loves me. Yes, I know. So hey, bro, do me a favor. You can talk to him any way you want to. Hey, bro, do me a favor, man. Will you let me get old? Because if you let me get old, I promise, I promise, I will make it right. A lot of things happened in my life, okay? I graduated from high school. I started coaching sports. Sports wasn't released to me because sports kept me in school. 2.5, 2.0 or better. I graduated with a 2.5 and a scholarship from the LA Times. Wasn't a lot of money, okay? But I had teachers, I had coaches, I had administrators, I had counselors that stood beside me and believed in me to make me a better person. And they were given to me because I believe it's part of my path of a promise that I made. Being able to speak today is the same way. I'm keeping my promise. Every day that he wakes me up, he allows me to keep a promise. Okay. So, I'm the CEO and founder. All I did was find the name, me ain't now, in my man cave, my garage in Northern California. Hey, that sounds pretty cool. Me ain't now. came from somewhere, right? You know what I mean? And then I, I'm the CEO. Well, most people think that the CEO is like the head coach. He's the man. Okay? He makes a lot of money. Da, da, da. Wrong. We are here for a reason. And that reason is because I have courage educating others. That's my CEO. Courage educating others in the game of life. Because life is a game and you have to learn how to play it. Does that make sense? It is. Okay? Some of you have girlfriends? Okay? Had girlfriends, broke up, all these fights and stuff. All that is is them trying you or life trying you and polishing and grinding you to become a better person. I call it catch and release. You got a girlfriend and it's not positive? You know, sometimes breaking up is pretty cool because you get to make up. It's pretty cool. But it gets old after a while with the same one. I know because I kept mine for five years. Even after I graduated, we got married and got a null in a month. Life is a game. You must learn how to play it. People told us, listen to this one, they told us. Oh, you two fight a lot. Yeah. But I she means so much to me. Yeah, but you find a lot. And then after a while, the breakups are... So what I say to you is this. You're too young to get involved. I was a father at 17, a junior at Long Beach Poly. Been through this game of life, people. 
All I have is the wisdom, all this right stuff, okay, is all wisdom. Every strand is something that happened to me in my life. At 63 years old, I get to give to you. Now, you can be the same person that I was when people were telling me you shouldn't. <laughs> get right, get right. My life, I can do what I want. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm telling you, you need to listen to your elders. You need to listen to your coaches because they have a game plan for you. Catch and release. You ready for this? What I tell my kids now. Yeah, reflex like that, huh? <laughs> Too small, it stinks, it's not the right one, okay? It, it, it just, it's ugly, okay? So what do you do? Catch and release. And it will make you a better person because you don't have that negativity and all that negative energy that's tying you down when you're trying to go on a path of being positive and become somebody. Because every single one of you have a purpose. Upon conception, when, we, when, when the polywog hits the egg, upon conception, your path is always put in front of you. All you have to do is wake up every day as long as you still have grains of sand in your hourglass. You have to wake up every day and try to learn how to play this game. Okay? So that being said, my game now is coaching. I've been coaching for over 40 something years. I started in 1977. I was the Belmont Bears way back when. <laughs> way back when, Belmont Bears football uh, organization. And then I also coached in Carson, uh, rec basketball for the Celtics, uh, 13 year old boys basketball. That's where I started. And I liked it. And, and, and the more I liked it, the more I understood that as a coach, football, track, water polo, wrestling, and swimming, okay, as a coach, you're not going to find a better one, I'll tell you that right now. I love that man. He's family to me. And I'm going to do everything I can to lock that heart, get all like, and then tears, and you know, something that ain't going to happen. But he was my skipper. I still call him skipper. That man, when I came on and he became the head coach at Long Beach Wilson's, man, I put him through so much stuff. Maybe some of the stuff that he should have up there is because of me, because he had to scratch his head because if there's a skipper, then he got Gilligan. And I was Gilligan, and I tell him that all the time. Why? Because I acted like Gilligan. Right? When we first got together in 2003, he'll tell you the story one day about how how I was motivating my kids because that's what I did. I motivated. I've been doing that my entire life. So coach will tell you how he was in the, in the laboratory, okay, and I was in there trying to motivate the players. And he had no idea what my game plan was to motivate the kids. We had just, got, we had just lost to a team. We shouldn't have lost to them. It was Cabrillo. We shouldn't have lost to them. Now we got Downey at Downey. And we have a chance to make the playoffs. We need this win. So I dig deep and I said, okay, what are we going to do, man? What are we going to do? And all of a sudden here it hits me. So I bring in my boom box. I put it up on top of the coat machine like I always do. Because I play music. You know, you guys like to play music to get motivated, right? Music gets you going, right? So all of a sudden, I'm in there. And I said, yeah, okay. And I had a newspaper clip of how it said something about Wilson. Keep me, keep me going, coach. How Wilson... Uh, needed this win because they are getting out of the race and they were doing really good, blah, 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 blah. And I started to read this and I took the paper and I threw it down and I took the blue box and I threw it on the top and I started stomping on it and coached to the bathroom he's going, whoa, what the heck is going on in there? True story. They went out and whipped Downey's booty by three touchdowns, I believe. <laughs> True story. Motivation. Motivating you guys. That's what we do. And I love it. Now I do it when I get a chance for football. Because it's my, it's, it's my desire. It's who I am. I'll never, ever, ever forget where I come from. Ever. Because if you ever forget where you come from, you're lost. Then you got to try to find yourself. And then you got to go through all those trips of life that game to try to get yourself back on the playing field. Does that make sense? Okay? So, 
That being said, I think I'm getting close. Understand this. Return or stand up. Return or stand up, please. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, uh, people that are uh, so return to everybody that's new, stand up. Good. Now that means everybody stands up. Why? Because we're a what? What are we? Say it again. Team. Team. I tell people all the time, and it's another one that, that, that if, if you don't feel it, it doesn't vibrate, you're not saying it loud enough. Because it's not going through your body. It's not exciting you enough to, to give you goosebumps. Or we say in the eye, there's chicken skin. So you guys are a what? Team. Say it again. Team. Okay. <clears throat> You need to understand that when you say that, you have to mean it. And it has to, when I, I'd probably yell louder than you guys, but it's okay. Because you're not quite there yet. But what you're going to do is every single one of you, I want you to link your arms together. Link it. Link it. Link it to your coach. Every single one of you are a chain, a link on this chain to this football program. Every single one of you are a link to this team and this program. You start taking a couple links off a fence, the fence is now open, anybody can get in there, and we don't want anybody in there, we just want our family, we just want our team. Does that make sense? So all you jocks, or all you think I'm a jock, show it on the football field. Be humble, be respectful. Let the people that are underneath you that are just coming into this program believe in you as being a, a leader because you're a link to this team and you're bonded. Does that make sense? Okay, you can unlink and sit down, please. I know I'm getting close. If I don't run 45 minutes, I'm not a link. I got a hole in my head. We call it the island a puka. I got a hole in my head. <laughs> I'm sorry, Coach. Another story. There's a lot of stories that he dealt with for me. But you know what he said to me? You know what he said to me that made it stood out to me? Because I went to him one day and, and uh, I said, you know, Coach, something had happened and I was feeling pretty down, a move that I made to motivate my players or our players. I did something. Kind of sort of was off the, off the wayside a little bit. You know what Coach Morales said to me? Every team, every coaching staff needs a Coach Chuck. Needs that intangible. You all know what intangible means, right? Anybody not know what intangible means? Okay? Intangible is, okay, you're not a superstar, okay, and you really don't know what you're part of. You are the character. I was the character of his coaching staff, and he, and he cared about me so much, he made me the JV head coach, he made me the freshman head coach when the program was sort of being lost at the freshman level because kids weren't developing the way they should, and he asked me to go down. I was honored when he did that. That was my last two years, which means he believed in me for the program. Okay? So, you guys, have to know this. Character. Not how good you are. Character makes a team. Character are the ones that are on the sidelines that don't really get in all the time, but they're out there every single day busting their butt for you. Anybody watch the movie Rudy? Watch it someday. Rudy. One of the best movies of all time. And it talks about just what I'm saying right now, which is just be there. Because you want to be there. You want to be part of this team. You want to be part of this program. And all you have is not a whole lot of game, but you got character. My girls basketball team, I coach J uh, Fred, uh, middle school girls basketball. I had some knuckleheads on my team, and I decided at the end of the year I was going to play a game on them. Because I believe in character. 
I believe in Rudy. And so all of a sudden, they think that most valuable player, she was 5'9", okay? But she had an attitude, hard guard, she was like four foot two, but she was like Speedy Gonzalez, and she could run our offense, okay? They all thought, yeah, most valuable player, most improved. I got up to the podium that night, and I blew them away. Matter of fact, I had to be escorted out because some of the parents wanted to come after me because I had a message. And the message was simple. I gave away character awards. I gave it to one of the girls that had been there for two years, seventh grade, eighth grade, that didn't get to play that much, but she showed up every single day. Her character gave her a reason to have an award. I did another one, same way, character. And so three of my awards were for character only because without character of a program, okay, when they literally walked off the court, they did, they would walk off the court and leave me hanging. That's how bad it was. But for the rest of the team, I had to stay in there and do my thing as a coach because I believed in my girls, the rest of them. So I said, all right, at the end of the year, you'll get yours. Not one of those that thought they were all that in four bags of potato chips got an award. And their parents were hot. But I'm going to tell you the same thing I'm telling you. I'm tell I told them the same thing I'm telling you right now. When that young man goes on the football field and he's the third stringer, and he, doesn't, and he doesn't play that much, but they need, you need him at that time. I got a little story I'm going to end with this. It's pretty cool. Clap him up. Pat him on the back. Tell him, tell him thank you for coming in and being part of this chain link fence to this program. Because you don't play for you. You play for this program. And this program is actually starting to become a little bit of a dynasty. I come from all the way up north. And I keep an eye on it all the time. So here it is. Coaches, it, it's the end of the game. It's the fourth quarter. It's tied. 0-0. Zero, zero. Been beating each other up for four quarters. The game is almost over. Like, like really close. You got the ball. The guys up in the booth are looking down at that coach. And they're going, I don't know. We've tried everything. and I, I don't know. And the coach is on the field. And the time is ticking. Tick, 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 tick. We gotta get something in. We gotta get this playoff. Coach is on the field. He's like, I don't know. The quarterback's rolling in. He's going, Well, give me the play. Give me the play. And they finally say to themselves, Coach goes over and looks at the quarterback and he goes, Quarterback goes, And the coach is like, I don't know. But he does this. Which means, Draw up a play in the dirt. So the quarterback in the time ticking, tick, 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 tick. Quarterback calls the plays, da -da -da, whatever it is. Ready play. You get out and you break. You get to the line. Okay? Tick, 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 tick. Okay? He gets the ball out. He runs to the left. Oh, he runs to the right. Oh, he, he gets a block. He steps up and he throws a long one deep. Wait, know what you call that? Hail Mary. Hail Mary. Now, I change it for you today to send this message of character. The ball's coming down. And it's, oh, it's slow motion. Oh. The ball is caught by the third string running back that doesn't see any action, but the game was so long and it got so beat up that that's all they had to put in to make the link in the fence, strong. And he catches the ball. Whew. Game over. Again, I didn't call it a Hail Mary. I called it a Hail Saint, Anthony. It can happen. It can happen to you this year. It might not be the championship, it might just be a game. Your parents understand you. You've worked all week to get to this game, and, and you got one last chance, and all of a sudden somebody throws that, that hail St. Anthony up. And the guy that catches is not the superstar, because he's out on cramps. He needs water, can't go anywhere. You go for him, he's like, I can't go anywhere, I can't go anywhere. Rudy, get in here. Get 
Rudy catches a touchdown pass and wins the game. Remember the story, gentlemen, because this season you're going to be challenged. This season you're going to rely on every single person next to you, and I don't care if he's the best. He's a link in this fence that makes this team and this program strong. That being said, I thank you so much. I'm honored. I'm blessed. I have some cards if you like them. Okay, if not, you can go on. You can go on. Uh, you can go on the internet. Look it up, and it's, it's small cap. Me, me. Now, I have a website. I have blogs. I have a mission statement, and it's all about me. Keeping my promise that I made at three years old by giving back positive energy, positive love, because sharing is caring. Thank you so much, and have a great day.